joining in both here on Ring Central and also on our YouTube, which is where we are simultaneously streaming this. And because virtual world can take people some time to log in, I'm going to spend some time at the beginning here for the first five minutes, orienting you, laying out some house rules and, and getting us all oriented while we let everybody continue to log in. So welcome to our virtual public meeting. We are here to review two alternative concepts for expansion of public transportation in the greater Richmond region. So thank you for being here. Uh, this meeting is being recorded, so I do need to read the statement about why we are holding virtual meetings right now. To protect the safety of meeting attendees, this meeting will be conducted solely through electronic communication means pursuant to and in compliance with City of Richmond Ordinance Number 2020-093, adopted April 9th of 2020. This meeting will be open to participation through electronic communication means by the public and closed to in-person participation by the public. Necessary GRTC administrative staff will assemble electronically for this meeting and will participate by video conference via Ring Central, which is where many of you are right now on the Ring Central platform. But I should also let you know that this is being streamed live over on our YouTube channel as well. And this video will be saved and available for playing later on our YouTube channel as well. Uh, some housekeeping as we're still letting folks get logged in and settled. Everyone will stay muted during the presentation, but there will be question and answer time at the end. If you're joining us on the Ring Central platform, you will be able to mute and unmute yourselves as we go along. Uh, please do feel free to use the chat feature to post your questions or any comments that you may have. Uh, I'll be able to save that uh, before we wrap up the meeting tonight. Uh, this, as I mentioned, is being streamed over on YouTube, so I just want to let you know if you do run into any issues with Ring Central during the meeting, don't panic. You can just pop on over to our YouTube channel, which is Ride GRTC, and you'll be able to pick back up where you left off in the meeting. Our agenda for tonight, we're going to have a presentation that will take about 15 to 20 minutes to go through the slides, and we'll be showing you the two concepts that we're here to talk about tonight. And then there will be question and answer time after the presentation. I do want to let you know that all of the meeting materials will be posted online after the meeting, including the presentation slides, but there are a ton of maps already available on our website, which is ridegrtc.com. And after I finish my introduction and go on mute, I will start dropping some of those links into the chat, both here on Ring Central and also over on YouTube for your convenience so that you can see uh, where to find all of this information. There are so many maps that we've been able to create to show the differences between the two concepts and help you make a decision that's most informed. And they're all PDFs, so you can pinch and zoom in as much as you like so that you can see the detail for your community, for your neighborhood. So a little background as to why we're here and having this meeting tonight. GRTC is required to submit an annual plan to the new Central Virginia Transportation Authority. You'll hear it called CVTA for short, often throughout this meeting tonight. And the CVTA is the first time that we've been able to have dedicated funding for GRTC, guaranteed at 15% of the CVTA total collected funds that are, are now going to be collected. And I do also have to tell you my own personal housekeeping, which is that you may periodically see a cat tail or some cat ears like this popping into frame. I know all of us in virtual world have our own kids and fur babies. So I will just warn you in advance, she may make some appearances. Her name is Buffy. So the CBTA is the first time that we have had this dedicated funding source that lets us look at the region and how we can prioritize those funds, this new funding source for regional transportation growth. And so we're going to be asking you tonight how we can use those dollars. And Adrian, whom I'm about to introduce, is going to explain this in much better detail, but I want you to think about this as $10 million more per year that GRTC will have, which translates to about 17 new buses on the street every day that we can put to one of these concepts that we're going to be talking about. 
I do want to acknowledge before I introduce Adrian that we have some of our regional planning partners with us, our local partners, and also some GRTC staff here on the meeting tonight. So they will hear your questions, they will be listening, and we'll ensure that all of your feedback is taken as we go through this process. And then one last thing before I turn it over to Adrian, there is an online survey and you'll get to see this at the end of the presentation, but I want to encourage you to please, after you are with us this evening, to take that online survey, share it with your neighbors, share it with your coworkers, with your friends, and encourage them to fill out that online survey. It's open for another week after this week, so we wanna make sure that we get as many responses as possible. We are still conducting rider survey outreach as well in person safely during the pandemic. Uh, so we are getting survey responses from people who may not be able to go online and do so. So at this time, it's now 5.06. I'm going to introduce Adrienne Torres. She is our director of planning and she is also the point liaison on this project working and collaborating with all of our local partners, with the CBTA, and also with Plan RVA, which is, is coordinating with us on this presentation this evening. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Adrian. Thank you, Terry. Um, great intro. And I will actually just go ahead and jump into sharing the PowerPoint as I talk. Um, thank you guys so much for being here this evening. Um, and we are excited to share these two concepts with you. The two concepts, one is considered a coverage concept, another is a ridership concept. Um, go into them in more detail um, so you guys can see exactly, let's see, there we go. So you guys can get more details and some information um, to supply you with some background. So hopefully you will take our survey at the end um, as Terry already mentioned. All right, so she did cover quite a bit of this, but I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight a little bit more. Um, so these funds, uh, the Central Virginia Transportation Authority was created by the 2020 General Assembly. And this is the first time that GRTC has uh, received dedicated transit funding. Uh, we received 15% of that total amount of that rented revenue source. Um, and we are working with um, Plan RVA as well as all the regional partners to work through this plan uh, to develop uh, how we plan to spend it. So this will be completed by the end of May. So what could GRTC do with this new funding? Well, a lot of the funding will go towards supporting our current system um, as it is exists today. We have um, several routes that span from Chesterfield, Henrico, um, cover the city of Richmond, um, and that will continue. However, we have allocated about $10 million that we would like to spend um, on expansion services. Um, as Terry mentioned, she already mentioned uh, one way to look at that is 17 buses. Well, here are a few more. It's about 100,000 additional service hours, or another way is about 20% uh, more service than we have today. Uh, comparison for that is the Route 19 today, which goes from Willow Lawn all the way to Short Pump, is 22,000 annual service hours. So you're looking at about five more um, Route 19s out there if you were to do that expansion. All right, what this map shows is our current system. And as Terry said, all the maps are on our website. Um, so I apologize that they do look a little bit small and it of course depends on your screen size as well. But I'm gonna just kind of describe them by color. So the way to look at our system today, the black line in the middle, which is um, actually Broad Street, is our BRT line. And that is our most frequent line with 10 minute service. Um, the red lines are 15 minutes. The blue lines uh, range from 30 to 35 minutes. The green lines are 40 to 70 minutes. And the goldish color, um, yellow orange, um, are peak only service. So a lot of those are our express routes. So you'll see we have lines that go into Henrico County, in the west and north as well as the east. Um, we go into Chesterfield County a little bit um, and a lot of service in the city of Richmond. So looking at jobs, and we like to look at jobs quite a bit because um, on our surveys, uh, we did a survey um, I think it was the last year, the year before, uh, the most used um, of our service is actually uh, traveling to work. So what this shows is our current system within 45 minutes job access. 
um, you'll see a lot of the darker red is greater than 125,000 jobs within 45 minute access. And then the colors turn to yellow and then lighter blue and then out to white. And white is zero to 1,000. And a lot of the jobs, of course, are in um, kind of the more denser areas. You'll see the city of Richmond quite a bit, um, a little bit of eastern Henrico County, as well as western Henrico County, and then spraying a little bit into Chesterfield County. And then it just gets less dense, um, a little bit more rural. Well, when you think about access um, and being able to make it somewhere in a certain amount of time, a big factor for transit is frequency. Um, frequency makes a difference because everyone has a different schedule. So uh, the more often a bus comes, the more it will work for a lot of people. You can go when you want to go. Um, you can make connections between frequent routes easily, as well as if there are less frequent routes, um, but you can make connections between those as well. And just in general, it's just better reliability um, to be able to have more frequency to catch a route. So for short, short, for short tips, waiting can make most of your travel time. Um, all right, so explaining frequency for those who don't necessarily ride transit. You can think of an elevator, um, traffic signal, long freight trains, if you're in a car, getting stuck behind them. Another way to look at it is imagine a gate at the end of your driveway. Let's say this gate just opens once an hour. Um, but let's say that you happened to miss it and you had to get to work. You had to wait, even though you missed it by just one minute. You would have to wait another 59 minutes before you had any opportunity to go out of that gate to be able to go to work. You would be an hour late for work. Cross that over to transit, it's the same idea. If a bus was frequent and you missed it or your connection was just off just a little bit, you know that you could catch it, let's say it's a 15 minute route. You knew on average you could catch it at seven and a half minutes again. But if a route came once an hour um, and you missed it, same concept as the bus, I mean, as the gate, you would have to wait another 59 minutes. So it's just less useful for a lot of people, especially with different schedules. It can't be equally useful everywhere, though, in terms of frequency. So if you're looking at ridership, um, land use really drives ridership. We look at density, walkability, linearity, and proximity. I'm going to get into what those mean um, in a little more detail since they are pretty technical. So in terms of density um, and a frequent route, even though the line has the same kind of traveling, you'll see if you are in an area that's a lot more dense, residential, jobs, commercial, um, you're going to have a lot more ridership because there's just more people to serve and more people for it to be useful to. If you're in an area that's a lot less dense, a lot more spread out, um, you're going to have lower ridership because less people will use it because there's just less people there and less destinations to go to. Uh, this is our current activity density in the region. Um, kind of similar to the job access um, map, you'll see a lot more density in the downtown Richmond area, um, some going out west into Henrico. You'll see some a little bit towards Midlothian and Chesterfield. Um, on the left over there, you'll see some yellow pockets in the southern portion of Chesterfield, and then on Nine Mile area um, in eastern Rico, it also is a little bit dense. So this is the current activity density of the Richmond region. Uh, another factor that is important is walkability. You really have to be able to be able to access the bus and be able to traverse um, through city blocks or county blocks to be able to have high ridership. Lower ridership, if you have to maneuver and walk distances um, to be able to access the road, it leads to lower ridership. Um, linearity. So the one on the top, the straighter the line, the shorter the journey, and the more people can find it useful. So the straight line, the business is right off the main street. Um, you don't have to deviate to get there. It's useful because you don't have to kind of maneuver to other places you're not going to. You get off when you need to. Well, the, the line that kind of deviates to every single place has lower ridership because as you deviate to these various places, it makes the route um, longer, but the place that's going is not necessarily where everyone wants to go. And the last piece is proximity. How far do we have to drive to connect to the destination? Um, does transit have to traverse longer gaps? So short distances between many destinations are faster and cheaper to serve. Long distances between destinations means a higher cost per passenger. So, but is ridership what you actually want? So we're going to get into the ridership coverage trade-off. 
All right, so for this example, this is a fictional town with 18 buses to deploy. Um, the dots are locations of residents and jobs. So you'll see lots and lots of dots kind of on these two main corridors. One travels east and west, another travels north and south, but there are a lot of other lines um, in this fictional town that also have people who live along it. So if ridership was your goal, you would actually put buses on these two main arterial corridors. Um, and this would actually get you high ridership because a lot of people are on these corridors as well as it goes to a lot of destinations. It's walkable, it's linear. Um, next one. So let's say your goal was coverage. You'll see in this um, particular image where there is service on almost every street. The result is more routes covering everyone, but less frequency and therefore lower ridership. So how should we balance these goals? Not necessarily saying one is um, preferred over the other, but they just both offer um, just different examples in terms of coverage versus ridership. So in the ridership, you are thinking like a business. You focus where ridership potential is highest. You support dense and walkable development. Um, you maximize competition with cars. Um, you maximize vehicle miles traveled travel reduction. And the coverage goal, you're thinking more like a public service. It's access for everyone. You support low density development, lifeline access for everyone, and then there's service in every member city or electoral district. So thinking about all that kind of background, setting the difference between ridership versus coverage, um, the benefits of both of them, I'm going to get into the concepts that we developed. Um, and we did this in a two to three day core design retreat working with um, Plan RVA, the, as well as uh, the various regions, sorry, the various jurisdictions in the region. So on the left, you have the ridership concept. And on the right, you have the coverage concept. And again, I'm apologizing, these are so small. Um, I'm going to get into them in a little bit more zoomed in different quadrants, uh, but they are posted, like Carrie said, online as PDF. You can zoom in as close as you want um, on uh, the online version. But I'm going to just kind of highlight the colors since that's kind of the easiest thing to see. So the ridership version on the left, you will see more red. And I'm not sure. I think you can see my mouse. Um, you'll see red over here uh, in Nine Mile area in Eastern Henrico probably can't see this, but this is a purple, which is an increased frequency um, in the western in Western Henrico. You'll see a dark red here, which shows actually improved service from today. Uh, and you'll see some dark red and red down here. Now in this one, which is even harder because of the lighter colors, but you'll see blue and green down here in southern Chesterfield County. You'll see more green out here in Henrico. Um, and you'll see some green over here as well. So a big difference is the ridership is not as much of a spread out footprint. It's a lot more frequency going towards this on the left. The right has a lot more blue and green, um, but it does cover a larger footprint. All right, so what does that mean in terms of exact routes and increases? Um, on the left, again, this is the ridership concept. You'll see a Route 1B extension uh, to Brook and Parham. This is every 30 minutes as well as this is an increased frequency um, on the Chamberlain Corridor. And you'll see a Route 3A extended to Azalea and Chamberlain. And this is over here. The Route 7C um, would be a, a new route on top of the 7A and 7B, which gives you 15 minute service all day on Nine Mile Road. And then in the coverage concept, um, there is still extension on Brook. It actually goes all the way up to Virginia Center Commons, but opposed to the 30-minute service in the ridership, it has 60-minute service that goes even further north. You'll see a Route C extended out into Hanover into Memorial Regional Hospital. You'll see a Route 3A, uh, same concept as the ridership, that extends to Azalea and Chamberlain. Um, and then you'll have something new down here. It is a Route 14. And this goes, um, our current 4B would become part of the four, become the 14. And this would extend all the way to White Oak Village and then be another route that serves uh, um, the airport. 
All right, ridership, um, looking at the southern um, end of the system, we have a 1A that is now extended all the way to Chesterfield Town Center with 30-minute service. A Route 2B that serves Warwick to Southside Plaza and Route 1C, which is an improvement on Hull to every 30 minutes. A Route 1 from Chamberlain and Wilmer, Hull and Broadwalk, Broadrock is now every 10 minutes. And then the Route 3B um, would be extended all the way to encompass what is currently the Route 111. So you could get a one seat ride all the way to um, John Tyler Community College from the downtown area as well as from almost into Henrico. So the coverage concept, you'll see a lot more routes out here. Um, the same thing as the ridership, uh, the Chesterfield Town Center 1A extension for 30 minute service. You'll see again the 2B serves Warwick Southside Plaza and routes 1B and 1C have 30 minute service on Hull. A new Route 84 to Wilkinson on Hull Street Road um, with 60 minute service. The Route 1C is extended to Commonwealth Center with 60 minute service. A new Route 85, this is down here, um, very faint green line, uh, that now serves Chesterfield Government Center and that 60 minute service. Uh, same concept as the ridership, the 3B is extended down uh, to encompass the 111 down to John Tyler Community College, an 86 extension uh, to Meadowdale Boulevard um, and serves the food line on US Route 1 so that connects to the 3B. And then this is um, the Route 14 that is extended to White Oak Village and then to the airport. Looking at uh, kind of Western Henrico, in the ridership, you will see a purple Route 19 and this improvement shows 20 minute service on this corridor from the 30 minute service that exists today. Uh, you'll see a Route 29, which is an express route, but it also provides a reverse commute uh, to serve the Innsbruck area. And the Route 18 and 79 get ex extended, um, so they actually are kind of combined with each other and they now have 30 minute service. Uh, the Route 5 has more frequent service to every 10 minutes. And with that, we actually encompass the Route 70 7, which becomes the 5A, and it no longer goes on um, Grove in the fan area. It connects up to U of R and then connects to Main and Carry and continues as the 5, and that would run every 30 minutes. Um, in the coverage, you still have the Route 29 doing its reverse commute to Innsbruck. Um, the Routes 18 and 79 uh, get extended to serve Innsbruck. The Route 19 uh, is not 20 minutes in this version but it is extended um, further into Goochland uh, to Wilkesbridge Parkway, and this is a sheltering arms uh, VCU facility out there. All right, so what does this mean for who is near service, what people can reach? And this is gonna compare um, those concepts. So the red is the ridership, the blue is the coverage, and the gray is existing. So you'll see, this is the gray in every single one, but you'll see in the any service that as far as residents that are near service, this is within a quarter of a mile of transit, a plus 55,000. The red is plus 16,000, so both are positive. But um, just keep in mind that we are trying to create quality or give access to quality service um, and the most useful service, I guess you should say also. And this would be 30 minutes or greater. So in that particular um, instance, 30 minute service here, the biggest improvement for plus 49,000 is um, the ridership concept, but plus 26,000, still good, an improvement for the coverage. And then for 10 minute service, that frequent service, how many people have improved 10 minute access? Um, it's plus 41,000 for ridership and the coverage is the same as the current system. Kind of talk through those. All right, next one. How many residents in poverty are near service? So the same thing, a quarter of a mile, and you'll see very similar in the first one. I will hit the button this time. Um, in the blue, it's plus 7,000 greater than the current uh, for residents in poverty within any access of transit, transit plus 2,000 uh, for ridership. And then within 30 minute service, um, the plus 9,000 for ridership, plus 6,000 for coverage. And then for those 
in poverty who have access to very frequent 10 minute service, uh, you have a plus 12,000 for ridership and um, there is no change uh, for the coverage. And how many minority residents are near service? Same thing within a quarter mile of transit. Uh, you have a plus 31,000 for coverage, a plus 8,000 for the ridership. Within 30 minute service, uh, plus 29,000 for the ridership, plus 19,000 for the coverage. And then for those who are minority residents within a quarter of a mile for 10 minute service, um, the most frequent, you have plus 25,000 for ridership and no change for coverage. All right, as far as access, where can you reach? So these are examples. Um, the black is a picking a location, a bus stop um, within our current system. So the gray area that's um, showing in that blob is uh, Richmond Community Hospital and how far you can get within 45 minutes of our existing system. So you can make it pretty far. You can make it up nine miles a little bit um, in the west end of the city, a little bit north, and make it across the river. In the coverage system, it looks like you can cover a little bit more. Um, it reaches plus 4% of jobs and plus 5% of res residents. Uh, in the ridership concept, it is even more, um, plus 25% of jobs and plus 70% of residents. All right, another example, and this is in the uh, northern uh, part of the city. Uh, from Six Points in Highland Park, how far can I get in the current system? Uh, again, the black dot is the bus stop. So in the coverage concept, you can make it a little bit further north. Uh, it's plus 2% of jobs and plus 9% of residents. And in the ridership concept, it's plus 6% of jobs and plus 18% of residents. All right, another example on um, the southern side from Swansboro, so Holy and Midlothian. Um, and the black dot is right here. How far can you make in the current system in 45 minutes? You make it across the river, um, the north side to Azalea, you can make it down Midlothian Turnpike, um, and you can make, make it down Richmond Highway. In the coverage, you can make it a little bit further south, plus 1% of jobs, um, plus 6% of residents. And the ridership concept, um, you kind of spread out even a little bit more, like you feel a little more going east. Uh, plus 10% of jobs and plus 22% of residents. And these are just examples. Um, going back to the website, uh, Carrie has posted quite a bit of these, um, they are called isochrome examples. So you can pick different bus stops um, and see the differences between ridership coverage and current uh, in same 45 minutes. All right, so going back to job access, um, since that is so important and um, a lot of our riders use that um, as the way to get to work. So this is the coverage concept. And again, it's the, the same 45 minute um, being able to access. This shows um, the increase from the current system and what you can access within 45 minutes. So the darker the blue, um, the greater the amount of jobs. So the, the dark blue is actually greater than 25,000. So you'll see a lot on the Lillian Turnpike. You'll see some on nine mile on the east. Um, some more on the, the north, which looks like it's a little bit of the Zalia area, and then in Western Henrico as well. This is the coverage concept. And this is the ridership concept. You see a lot more blue um, and a lot more on more on Midlothian Turnpike, a uh, nine mile with that uh, uh, increase in frequency on um, the Route 7, a lot more job access, and a lot more going on, it looks like, um, on the Route 18 and 79 out in Western Henrico, and quite a bit um, in Northern Henrico as well as on the city. All right, looking at it a different way, um, changes in jobs reachable. So these are the same kind of graph, just showing the difference. So again, the red is the ridership, the blue is the coverage, and the gray is the existing. So within 45 minutes, um, average residents in poverty is the first one, being able to access jobs within 45 minutes. You'll see, you'll be able to see a plus 14% for ridership, a plus 4% for coverage. Uh, average minority resident um, can access within 45 minutes 
an increase of plus 17%, um, the coverage scenario plus 6%, and then the average resident overall uh, plus 16% for ridership and a plus 4% for the coverage. All right, now that I've gone through um, the concepts, a little bit of background on ridership versus coverage, um, we want to hear from you guys. Um, just go over if you guys have any questions, uh, what more you might want to know, which way you're kind of leaning, um, are there specific things you like or dislike. So I'm going to turn this back to Carrie to kind of let her uh, be the facilitator of the question. Okay, great. Thank you, Adrian. And for those of you who are following along with Adrian's slides, if you haven't already checked the chat, if you're with us on Ring Central or on YouTube, I've been posting links to the maps that have been shown during the presentation so that you can easily find the ones that are, are or have been called out and were a little bit harder to see on the screen, especially if you're looking on a mobile device. Uh, so if you would like to post questions in the chat, you are welcome to do so. Uh, we will also be opening up shortly for people to open their mics and ask questions. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that is to raise your hand and I'll be able to see that you want me to open up your mic. But Adrian, we do have a couple of questions that have already come in on the chat, so we'll get started. First right. question is from Pat. Are, and this is a great one, I love this one. Are there ways to take parts of each concept or is it all one way or another? Yes, um, no, it is not all one way or another. Um, these are kind of, I would say, extreme, one with the ridership and the coverage uh, and getting the feedback from you guys um, as well as anyone else we invite to, to take the search survey, we encourage you. Um, to see kind of what the preferences are. And actually the next step is taking all of that feedback uh, and we will be re-meeting with um, Plan RVA and the jurisdictions and the um, other transit affiliated agencies to develop basically a recommended plan that may be kind of a combination of each of the coverage versus ridership um, after this. And this is, should happen within the next couple of weeks. And we're going to be coming back out, Adrian, with, with another round of public updates before the plan is sent in May, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, phase two outreach. Okay, great, so everyone stay tuned for that. We'll be posting that information uh, later in the spring. Okay, next question is from Zeke. One of the things I thought about the ridership concept is that it improves overall reliability. If a bus is out of service, waiting 30 extra minutes versus one hour matters a lot. Is there a way to quantify that? And was that part of this study? Sorry, can you repeat quantify the? Yeah, the time, the extra time that you'd have to wait. Uh, I think the, the heart of this question is trying to understand the, the trade off here with when you're on the ridership, if you miss or a bus is out of service and it's normally coming every 30 minutes, then there'll be another bus coming in 30 minutes. But if it's an hourly bus, then it could be two hours total that you're waiting for that bus to come. So how are we quantifying this, this difference? Um, as far as quantifying, I mean, I think it really is, you, those are things you gotta consider when you're really going through the survey is what I would say. Um, whether you're looking for frequency um, to really, I mean, you basically hit everything as far as, is it more important for you to have something that comes more often or are you um, more worried about having the footprint that accesses everyone? And as far as specific quantif quantifying it, um, I don't think we have specific numbers that we're looking at. Hopefully okay, that thanks. answers your question. And if you need to elaborate, you should welcome to, to come back on when it's checked. Yeah, that's right. Zeke, if you want to raise your hand um, and, and elaborate more, then, then I'll be glad to put you in my list of those who are asking to speak. Okay, I have another question. This one's from Ken. Has consideration been given to the infrastructure improvements that are needed, such as additional benches, shelters, and sidewalks? Yes. Um, we are looking at and making those improvements for our current system and we'll definitely make those same um, plans for improvement for any expansion that we also do. Um, we currently have a shelter plan that we have in place um, where we are strategically based on our current qualifications and criteria and working with the jurisdictions trying to get um, as many shelters out there 
as possible um, and are doing a similar effort with um, benches and trash cans. Um, but we're also working with the jurisdiction to improve uh, any sidewalk issues. We know accessibility is just so important to be able to uh, traverse bus stops, um, as well as making sure that there are landing pads, which is an 855 foot um, piece of concrete to be able to stand out of the dirt and gravel and all of that at bus stops. So yeah, we are prioritizing not just service quality, but infrastructure quality too, um, as we move forward with this plan. Okay, great. And after we get through the Q&A, everyone, I'll drop that link to the bus stop page where you can see the updates that we're working on with putting in new benches, shelters, trash cans. Uh, next question, this one's from Jim. How is participation in the survey progressing to date? I pulled up the latest check and we have 282 responses so far. We just had our first day of field outreach yesterday. We'll be doing more of that over the next week to ensure that we are hitting some of our busiest bus stops where we can capture the most responses safely outdoors and, and get that feedback from our riders in addition to the online survey responses. Okay, this question is from Amari. Has there been an analysis of the change in accessibility of the jobs in terms of education, skill set, and employer size in addition to the time just at time and distance, excuse me, to the job location. And I know, Adrian, this is something that we had talked about with a consultant prior to this, this meeting. Um, the particular map you saw is an aggregate of all those different types together. Um, it is not broken down. So we have not done the analysis to, to break it down at this point in time, um, but I'm sure we could do it to just see the different types of jobs that are accessible. Right, and, I'm, and we know from the destinations that we're looking at, we, we of course can know the types of jobs that are available at those uh, destinations. And we do have our onboard writer survey from October of 2019, which granted was before the pandemic, um, that told us a lot about why people are writing, where they're writing, and how they're connecting. Okay, we have a question from Stephanie, another really good one um, that's talking about uh, the related issues that come up when you're planning for transportation growth. Are street crossings, lights, zebra stripes going to be improved on routes that will have greater frequency? This again will have to be a, a coordination uh, with the jurisdictions to make that level of um, improvements, but we are definitely um, identifying those kind of improvements as we make changes. Okay, great. And I'm just popping over real quick to make sure that I don't neglect my YouTube participants to see if there are any questions there. Okay, seeing none, I'm going to check for hands on the Ring Central chat so that I don't neglect you. If you have a question, you are, of course, welcome to raise your hand and, and I'll unmute you. Um, we do have another question, though, coming in on the chat. This one's from Ken. Ooh, it's a good one. Do the plans for a downtown transfer center remain the same under both concepts? Yes, well, you'll see that the most of the system is as it is today. Um, we're not really recommending too many changes to our current system. So the importance of its current location um, does stay the same. Okay, great. And everyone, I'm pulling that link right now to our bus stop page so that you can see where we are with amenities. And we'll be updating this throughout the year as we install uh, new shelters, benches, and trash cans. And there's this really great interactive map now that lets you see by bus stop location what amenities are already out there today. And that map will be updated every time we, we do what's called a booking. When there's a schedule update, uh, that's when the map will get updated so periodically throughout the year. All right, let me check for any hands raised, bear with me. All right, I don't see any hands raised. So everyone don't, don't hesitate to put a question in the chat. And as a reminder, we will be posting the slides from this meeting online on the project page for this after the meeting so that you can see it and it will be as a PDF. Okay, we have another question. This one's from Omari. I remember something about the CBTA having to approve plans for using the funds. Is that true and how does that work? That's a great question, Omari. Yeah, so this is part of that whole process. Um, we are developing the Regional Public Transportation Plan. 
um, we will be addressing kind of our, our current routes and how we plan on spending money towards those, as well as we've identified um, about $10 million that we'd like to put towards expansion. All of that will be um, put in the plan. We have two consultants that are working with us on it, uh, Michael Baker and International and Jarrett Walker and Associates. Um, I can go actually go ahead and go to kind of to the, the next step. But um, with that, we are getting feedback at this stage, which is um, phase one um, from the public, and this is more on the concept. Then we'll get back together um, after we've gotten all the input. The survey closes on March 12th, and um, we'll work with the region, the jurisdiction to develop a, a recommended kind of design to move forward. And as Terry said, we will then come back to the public um, to kind of see that recommended draft plan, and then we'll ask for more input. So the plan, the draft plan will be completed in the spring, and the final plan is expected to be done by May. And at that point in time, that's when CBPA would actually be um, approving this plan. And, and I will mention this, Adrian, for the benefit of, of our attendees, that the, the two concepts that were created for this meeting tonight were built on two previously approved plans and have incorporated feedback that we've received at GRTC since the 2018 redesign. So there has already been a lot of public uh, contribution to what led to the framework for both of these concepts. So we're glad that you're, you're here and engaging with us on this because we're now down into some of the, the nitty gritty decisions that can be made as we, as we take your feedback and, and really the wish lists that we've had uh, waiting for that funding to be available that we can now make those decisions to implement with. Right, right. Okay, I'm just doing another sweep to check for any hands or questions in the chat. And I'm so glad that y'all could participate tonight. Thank you. I do wanna be respectful of everybody's evening, especially while we still have a little bit of light left. So uh, we, Adrian is actually done with her presentation and you are absolutely welcome if you'd like to uh, say goodnight, uh, but we will stay on here for just a little bit longer in case there are some questions that come up from some of you here in the chat. And again, uh, you are absolutely welcome to raise your hand so that we can unmute you and, and speak with us here at the end of the meeting. Uh, but we'll be here for just a little bit longer uh, to entertain any other questions. But thank you all. I, if you are leaving, I strongly encourage you to take the survey online, share it, share it and make sure that your neighbors, friends, people who ride the bus with you regularly are taking it. I hope that you all are staying safe and well uh, during the ongoing pandemic. Okay, so I'm gonna just pop over and make sure that I haven't missed any questions over on the YouTube. Awesome, all right, we've got a question from the YouTube chat. Stefan, I see there is a proposed park and ride at Cogville and Hopkins. Will that be part of the Route 86 extension or is that a separate service? That's a good question. Um, that is a project with, that Chesterfield County is working on, um, and that, the one at, I'm not going to speak to that one. They're working, I think you should follow up with, um, let me look into that and see which one that is. I don't think that they're doing an extension on one for the 82, um, and separate one that they're working on, another park and ride is just for Vanpool. I don't remember which one is which, so I'm not going to speak, um, but I know one is just for Vanpool. And we do have Chesterfield staff that are in the meeting tonight. So you oh, yeah. are, if well, you would like, you are question. welcome to unmute yourself <laughs> and chime in if you would like to. But in any case, Stefan, they have heard your question uh, and are aware of your interest. Would you mind, this is Barb Smith with Chesterfield. Would you mind? Hi, Barb. Hello, how are you? Great, thanks for being here. Yeah, no problem. So would you mind repeating that question? Absolutely. So this is from Stefan who's watching over on YouTube. I see there is a proposed park and ride at Cogbill and Hopkins. Will that be part of the 86 extension or is that a separate service? Um, we're building that park and ride now and right now there's no bus service to it. Um, so we'll be encouraging carpooling and van pulling. Um, but one of the um, proposals that Adrian was showing today, I think loops over that way. Um, but I would need Adrian to confirm that. Um, Adrian could say yes in the coverage scenario. Yeah. 
Um, let's see if I can go back. Uh, let's see. I think it goes down here. Yeah, I've got to get oriented. It always takes me a little bit of time. The 86, yeah. Yes, see, yep, that 86 route, um, I can see where it's crossing Chip and Ham on Hopkins. So that's getting people very close to the parking lot ride lot. You can see there's a little road heading east, right above Chip and Ham on this map. And we will be constructing some sidewalk from the park and ride lot over to 86. And the Hopkins Park and Ride or Hopkins Cogville Park and Ride lot is being designed to accommodate transit in the future. So um, if the 86 runs like this down the road, we would be able to have that bus loop in there. I hope and that. Barb Stephan comments, he says, there are two shopping plazas and a library close by. It would be great mm -hmm. to have an extension there. So yes. thanks, Stephan. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thanks, Barb. Barb's with Chesterfield County, and there are other Chesterfield County staff on, on the meeting with us tonight. So thank you for being there and ready to jump in and answer that question. All right, let me see if I've got any new ones over on the YouTube uh, stream. Don't see any new questions at this time. This is great. We've addressed that one. We do still have some meeting participants with us this evening. So if you have any other questions or you want us to go back and cover a topic that you want to spend a little bit more time on, don't hesitate uh, to let me know in the chat or by raising your hand. Good night, Amari. Amari says good night and thank you to everybody. Great good questions, night. Amari. We appreciate you. And I do want to acknowledge that our board chair is in the meeting this evening as well. So thank you uh, for Ben being here with us tonight. We've had our CEO and chief of staff also popping in at times during the meeting tonight to, to see how we're doing. So thank you both for being here with us. All right, I don't see any more questions over on YouTube or here in the Ring Central chat. All right, Adrian, would you mind maybe going to that closing slide? And then I will drop the survey link in here one more time so that everyone can grab it from the chat. Awesome, okay, so there is the survey link. Um, we will, after this meeting uh, closes down here in just a few minutes, We'll be posting this presentation online as well, so you can go back and, and review the slides and the information that Adrian shared. But I, I cannot stress enough to take the survey and then to also go to our website because we have posted a lot of maps to help you see and compare side by side what the differences are between the ridership and the coverage concept. We also wanna be cognizant of, of related uh, needs that there could be for serving public, serving communities here with either concept. So you're going to see the ridership and the coverage concept maps overlaid with other data sources like low income or poverty or race or ethnicity. So I encourage you to look into those maps as well because they are really informative and, and in some cases really eye-opening and will help you see the trade-offs with each concept and the communities that would be served uh, by either option. And then of course, looking at the 45 minute commute, how long it will take you to get from one location uh, outside of that within what are called the isochrones. Uh, basically, it's just your, your travel path that you could take within that amount of time by using transit and walking. So we wanna thank you all for being with us tonight. Uh, I do not see or hear any other questions. Doing one final sweep for any hands raised. Uh, so at this time, we are going to go ahead and close out the public meeting. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Stefan has come with one more comment. I'm so glad I checked over. Stefan, for the record, said also Falling Creek Middle School, Falling Creek Elementary, and Hopkins Elementary, and Eula Elementary, all of these schools are on Hopkins Road. So again, we're just going back to that conversation that we just had about uh, the Cogville Hopkins 86 concept extending into Chesterfield County a little bit deeper. Thanks, Stefan. It's, it's always good to think about the destinations because that's the point. Uh, 
you are trying to get from point A to point B and destinations matter when we are making these decisions. So it is really helpful to zoom in on these maps uh, and really get familiar with, with what's possible for your neighborhood and, and for your own trip. So thank you all. I do also wanna thank Rob who has been our IT brains behind this. So Rob, you are clear to stop YouTube stream and we will be closing out the meeting shortly. Thanks everybody for spending some time with us tonight. Please stay safe and stay well, and we hope to welcome you aboard again very soon. Have a good Thank night. You. Thanks, Rob. You're welcome. You the best. All right, let me save the chat one more time.